Okay, hello. Uh, I just finished making a desktop video explaining how the first Gulf War played the primary role in bin Laden's motives for attacking the USA. Now, uh, unlike the liars, I didn't just make up some bullshit. I based this upon the real words of bin Laden. All right. And he said the same crap over and over again in different ways. And I gave you some examples of what he said. All right. So these are Bin Laden's motives. So I know a lot of people want to attack. Oh, bullshit. The first Gulf War didn't cause Bin Laden to attack us. Well, why do you want to attack us? Oh, he hate our freedom. He want to steal our stuff. Pull shit. He crazy religious fanatic. All right, so I gave you detailed facts for this. Now, what I want to do today is uh, do a quick review of part of this diagram. This diagram helps summarize how uh, the USA has... Uh, Long, unbroken chain of conflict creation in the Middle East, going back to the Iran-Iraq War, connected to the Gulf War, connected to the 9-11 attacks, the War on Terror, and then Bush administration's bullshit uh, manipulation of the public to use the 9-11 attacks by Al-Qaeda to justify an attack upon Iraq. Who had no uh, involvement in the 9-11 attacks? Nor had WMD. Right? So I, I know that this was attacked. That's crazy. That'd be unbelievable. Well, I explained all the facts in the Iran-Iraq War. I explained the facts of the first Gulf War. How the U.S. played a part in setting it up. How that was a big money maker in destroying OPEC. Then just today, I explained how the first Gulf War was the key source of motives. Not the only one, but the key basis of motives for Bin Laden's attack on 9-11. Right? Alright. So, I made the simple summary diagram below. So that people can see the unbroken chain of U.S. conflict creation in the Middle East. But unfortunately, none of the, the detailed supporting facts can be shown in such a simple diagram. You can't teach it all. <clears throat> and you know what? I honestly expect the masses to retain nothing. What good is it going to do if I try to teach it all again? They're not going to retain it. I have taught all the detailed facts at least 50 times. I teach this conflict creation stuff in my sociology classes. I made videos so many times in this already. What do people remember? Nothing. It's all new to them. It's all crazy and unbelievable to them. They never retain any facts. Therefore, a simple, stupid wave of social retard reality will dominate the minds of the masses. And then they will say, Oh, that'd be crazy, unreal, unbelievable, when they know zero facts that I taught. All they'll ever know is a simple, stupid wave written in a 10-second blurb. For any stupid fourth grader to read. Oh, they can understand that. I swear. Alright, so. A. 1951. Iran nationalized its oil. Well, we can't let that example uh, stand. Because we don't do something about it. Nations around the world are going to do the same thing. With U.S. investments, British, whatever. Now, I 
I'm all for protecting investments. But at the same time, I know that with neocolonialism and colonialisms, those investments were pretty damn corrupt. Putting dictators in power. Leveraging them to get them to sign off concessions. Totally undemocratic. I don't want to get into details of that. So you got to be honest about that. So we hold a coup. 1953. Overthrow the Iranian democracy. Install a dictator. Well, that, that created conflict. Resulted in the 1979 Iran Revolution. And their taking of our embassy. And the hostages. Just drove Americans nuts. They're all pissed off. So, key event occurred in 1970. USA reached peak oil production. Then in 1971, Texas Railroad Commission set pro rationing at 100% capacity, which meant we lost control of oil price. I'm not going to explain it all again. Control of oil price went to OPEC. A couple years later, OPEC exerted their power, embargoed U.S. and some other countries, jacked up oil prices four times, killed their economy. Then another OPEC country in 79, right? Was the Iran Revolution resulted in oil prices being jacked up again. Three times. Killed their economy again. So, right on the heels of the a revolution, 1980, when Iran was weak, Iraq attacked them. Resulted in the eight-year war. Our ally was Iraq and Saddam Hussein. Our mortal enemy was Iran. We hated him. And this war busted OPEC. All prices fell. Uh, what do I got the graph? They plummeted. I won't show you again. I've shown you that graph so many times. You just haven't memorized by now. Now, U.S. provided weapons and intelligence to both sides, ally and enemy, fueling the war. And a key outcome of the war was Iraq's economic crisis. So after the war, Iraq's economy was shattered, right? They were in bad straits. Plus, they got an $86 billion war debt. And these things became the key... Cause for the first Gulf War. Saddam's key motive for attacking Kuwait. Right. All right. So the Iran Iraq War, right? U.S. provided Iran key weapons and intelligence uh, that led to Iran's success in their 1986 offensive. In which they took Iraq's Fall Peninsula. Right? That's Iraq's only access to the Persian Gulf. Now, they can't export oil. Iraq's screwed. Right? Uh, G H. So, also with Iran occupying Iraq's Fall Peninsula. They're right on the border with Kuwait. And Kuwait's a small country with no defenses. So who's right next to Kuwait? Saudi Arabia. This threatens both Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. Sunni nations start pumping out more oil. All right? I mean, they're the ones who are financing... Iraq's war effort, oil prices fall. All right. Then the whole Iran Contra 
<coughs> weapons uh, hit the public in November 1986. All right, hit the press. And then in May 1987, the following year, the Iran-Contra hearings before the Senate committee begin. Reagan administration is on trial. They're vulnerable. So Saddam takes advantage of that less than two weeks into the hearings. And he has an F-1 Mirage put two Exocet missiles into a U.S. ship, the USS Stark, causing the death of 37 U.S. sailors. Right. Payback for the crap we're doing. Why are we fueling this war? They, what, what, what do these Middle East nations who lack the technology or the industry to make sophisticated weapons, well, how do they get them? They buy them. With what? Oh, with money to grow off money trees. Hell no, they got to sell oil. Right? Oil prices fall. Plus, they play economic warfare on each other with oil. I explain all this stuff to you. All right, so they whack the start. U.S. boys play for Reagan dirty dealings here. All right. Of course, Reagan administration denied any responsibility by saying, oh, it's an accident. It's an accident. Yeah, bullshit. Okay. Iraq must, so Iraq can't, can't, can't uh, pump out their own oil. They got to pump it to Kuwait. Now that they lost the Far Peninsula. And then ship it out on Kuwaiti tankers. Well, you, you know that's going to piss off Iran. I'm losing my voice. I'll try to, I'll try to push through anyways. So Iran knows that's an act of war. They started increasing attacks on Kuwaiti tankers. It wasn't much. Three Kuwaiti tankers attacked after the fall. Two prior to that. Right. Five Kuwaiti, I mean, come on. Big scope of things, that's nothing. All right. Uh, and then Kuwait seeks and gets U.S. protection in the form of U.S. naval escort, which results in nine engagements with Iran. Right. So, U.S. naval escort for Kuwait tankers is a clear act of war. I mean, those tankers are, are carrying Iraqi oil. You got to be stupid and not think, oh, that's not an act of war. You're directly aiding and abetting a combatant in a war. That's an act of war. So it increases conflict with Iran. And they start laying these drifting mines. Roberts hit, USS Roberts hits one of them. So we retaliate with praying, Operation Praying Mantis. Right. Kick ass on Iran. Jack it up more conflict. All right, so because we gave Kuwait naval escort protection, that built trust, credibility, comity between Kuwait and the United States. They trusted us. All right. Then that played a big part in Kuwait taking the advice from Director of CIA William Webster to take advantage of Iraq's economic crisis and apply pressure, uh, economic pressure on Kuwait in the form of uh, overproduction of oil. So remember, a key outcome of the war was Iraq was in economic crisis with big debt. Well, Kuwait's screwing up in the midst of this, right? All right. So that, that causes Saddam to get pissed off. 
right? We're in bad shape, and you're screwing us. So Iraq warns Kuwait four times, stop overproducing and paying $2.4 billion in stolen oil, right? And, they, and Iraq accused Kuwait of being a U.S. puppet who conspired with the U.S. to hurt the Iraq economy. All right. Then he put 100,000 troops on the border of Kuwait. Now, by taking Kuwait, Saddam will double his oil production capacity, right? That'll allow him to dominate the Middle East militarily. He'll have plenty of money to buy more military weapons. Plus, he will have plenty of spare excess oil production capacity, which means he can reduce production and still have plenty of money for his country. And that will give him control of oil price. Both of these are strategic disasters for the U.S. Only an idiot would allow that. It's crazy stupid to allow Saddam to dominate the Middle East militarily and to have control of oil price. All right. So Saddam also had other bullshit reasons for invading um, Kuwait, right? Stealing oil with slant drilling. Um, theft of 700 acres, right? Crap like that. Kuwait belonged to Iraq historically. All that crap, right? So he's got a bunch of reasons, right? One, Kuwaiti overproduction, right? Two, I think his real reason is he wants to get Kuwait's oil. It's going to make him the military powerhouse in the Middle East, and he's going to get control of the oil price. And then three, the USA Bush administration gave Saddam three absolutely clear green light signals. No doubt about it. Insane. Stuff you would not say at any time, let alone after Iraq makes four threats to attack Kuwait and puts 100,000 troops on the border. Then, right away, you turn around and give three green light signals? Bullshit. Given the fact that the U.S. was behind uh, getting Kuwait to overproduce Guaranteeing their protection. And then we leave them hanging out to dry with three green light signals. If that doesn't look like the setup to you, you got to be brain dead. You cannot think. Oh, no conspiracy theory. That's conspiracy theory. No one that smart. Yeah, not all people are retards like you. So that results in the first Gulf War. Now, just like the Round Rock War, all prices plummeted. W. X. Where's X? Oh, X is up here. All right. So I wanted to view. So these are Saddam's motives. Kuwait is overproducing. Uh, Kuwait was encouraged to overproduce by the director of the CIA. And Saddam, Saddam, I believe his real goal was to get that Kuwaiti oil. He also had some other bullshit reasons. Plus, he, he was motivated by the fact that USA... Gave the green light. I showed you how that was the exact opposite of what he should do. Saying nothing would, would have been better. I mean, this is insane, stupid. Especially if you got the strategic threat. You can't afford both of these. Both of these are strategic disasters.
All right. So the big effect of the Gulf, first Gulf War was Saudi and Kuwaiti war debt. Destroys OPEC unity for nine years. Especially Saudi. Kuwait was less of a factor. Caused oil prices to fall at a time when they should have been climbing due to USSR falling. Russian, Russian oil production cut in half. Loss of 5.5 million barrels per day. That's huge. It's a massive loss. Asian economies rising, so Asian oil demand increasing. Both should have caused increase in oil price. But no, oil prices fell. The big factor was destruction of OPEC. All right, so between 1991 and 98, seven years, you had seven years of WMD inspections. That was a result of the first Gulf War. Right. And don't forget, the U.S. supplied a lot of crap to uh, Iraq during the Reagan administration. That was in the Regal dual use uh, uh, report. Congressman Regal. And then all the dirty games the CIA played with WD inspections. Well, all the while, 567,000 Iraqi kids were. <laughs> we're dying due to the WMD based economic sanctions right you can sell no oil they sent to Iraq they sold a little I think it was 400,000 barrels per day that's about a tenth of what they normally produce so Another outcome of the first Gulf War was the first Gulf War became the main source of bin Laden's motives for his attack on 9-11. He had six main motives. One of them, WMD inspections and UN oil sanctions caused the death of 600,000 Iraqi kids. He exaggerated. Remember, he rounded up. He was angry at U.S. wars of Muslims in the Middle East. Well, there's only been one first Gulf War. But also, he was mad at throughout the world. Pissed off at permanent U.S. occupation forces in the Middle East. To steal air resources and wealth. That means oil. U.S. Saudi collusion to lower oil price. That was kind of bullshit. What it really was, was Saudi war debt. Right? They can't cut back production. They got to keep jacking out oil. Kept oil prices down. Broke OPEC unity. OPEC's in chaos. Everyone's over overproducing. All prices are falling. That means less revenues for Saudi Arabia. That means they eventually made welfare cutbacks. And the Saudi standard of living was cut in half. 25000 per family on average cut to 13000 Their incomes are cut in half. Saudi Arabia is a big welfare state. Unproductive people. Increased Saudi poverty. U.S. unsolicited support for Israel. So this is non Gulf related. Also, the big push for Sharia law. Right? Which is, what is Sharia law? That means Islamic State crap. Right? No separation between church and state in that Islamic state crap. 
So I'm going to stop there. That led to the 9-11 attacks. That led to the war on terror. Then Bush took the attack by Al-Qaeda and sucked all America into, into an attack upon Iraq. Who had nothing to do with 9-11? And who had no weapons of mass destruction? All right. I'm going to stop there. So, I know that this was an attack. I backed up all this with facts. Now, I know the mass. I just taught this. All the facts. Now, I know the masses don't remember anything of what I taught. So, this is probably all crazy to them again. But certainly, there's got to be one or two or a small handful of people who kind of remember that I taught all the facts to support everything I said. Knowing nothing, the masses laugh at this. That's crazy. That's unbelievable. Let's make a joke. That's the reality. Retard reality. Based on nothing. No, I can't teach all the facts again. And what good would it do because you won't remember any of it anyways? Nothing's going to stick. It's hopeless.